today's video I'm going to have a look at how I foiled the wreath in the background of this card. This is foiled just using one hot foil stamp and it's just a small one, it's just this one. Now this is part of a, uh, a one half or two part set. It's supposed to sort of be a laurel wreath and have one that comes up the other side. Um, as I'm on the design team they send us out stuff early um, and I only got sent one half of it. So I can't do the, the wreath and you typically do a monogram or something in the middle of that or turn that into into sort of most of a wreath and have some flowers and a sentiment. Um, but I've only got the one half so I thought what can I do with that? I could use it as foliage. And then I thought oh, I wonder if I could build a wreath. So you get um, templates for stampers to use for, for wreath building so you actually arrange your stamps evenly around a uh, a, a, a wreath um, and I thought perhaps I could do the same thing with foiling so I did this one and I, I did actually did it while I was making Christmas cards and it was kind of a, did a break from making Christmas cards um, so I did that a few weeks ago um, and then didn't get time to actually follow up with making the video for it so that's my my first one um, and that's done in some some sparkly silver foil and then I've used a sort of um, medium blue foil sort of royal blue foil um, over the top to do the second layer that kind of falls in between so that's on a card blank that's cut down from a, an a5 card blank okay so my my actual card blank is sort of 14.8 centimeters square which is it's about five and three quarter inches okay is, is the size i've worked on um, and that's a a handy size for working with a GoPress and foil because it is 15 centimeters wide and that width fits through your A5 size die cutting machines with your GoPress and foil. But if you have a larger die cutting machine like I do, there's no reason at all that you can't use a larger piece of card and have it sticking out the sides of the GoPress and foil when you roll with it. So we'll, I'll have a look at how you do that as well. So this one, as I say, was done using this die, okay? And I've also done some using some other hot four stamps. So this one is called Thin Ferns. I think it was part of the Cella V collection that was out a year or two back, but you might still find stock of that around. I'm also going to try out using this big hot four stamp um, I think this is called Thorny Branch. I think it's one of the Anna Griffin ones. Um, and I think you might find, again, it's an older one, but you might find stock of it still about, or you might have bought it ages ago and thought, well, what can I do with it? So particularly for the larger card, I thought I'd have a look at that. So let's see how we get started. So the first thing we have to do is get our piece of card or paper that we want to foil onto. Okay. Now, so it shows up on the camera, I'm going to do a template on a piece of card, but then I'm also going to do one on a, on a piece of um, pattern paper. And this, this is actually from the Butterfly Garden collection that was out earlier in 2019. Um, but drawing on the back of this is not going to show up well on the camera, so I'm going to show you using a piece of white card. So I've cut this to a 15 centimetre square. And I don't need to do any measuring as such, but I do need a straight edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line corner to corner. And if you're doing this on your pattern paper, you need to do it on the back. OK, so this will be the back of my of what I foil. Okay, and then I'm going across the other way. This lets me find the middle of my card. So if you prefer to measure, that's fine. But I've just drawn two diagonal lines. Okay, across the card. Okay, and then you need a line across the middle. Now I've got one of these handy craft rulers that's got squares on it. 
and that makes it easy to to line up um, one of the the lines across it with the edge of my card so that I know I'm going across in a, a way that's parallel to the edge that means in line with the edge but if you haven't got one of those perhaps you've got a cutting mat okay so what you can also do I'll just grab my my normal ruler cheap normal ruler from the supermarket okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my piece of card up against one of the lines on this and I'm, I'm going to do it so it's approximately and I do mean approximately so there's a line that's going to go through the middle okay it might not it might be quite away from the middle and then I'm going to move my ruler so that I'm touching the cross in the middle and then I'm just going to look with my eye to see whether or not at either side my ruler is the same distance from the nearest line okay so if I was really wonky I would know yeah I'd be able to see that because I've, I've got lines on here okay but I want to go through that cross in the middle and just be more or less level and draw my line and then I can turn my card round and do the same the other way so I'm going to line it up so it's alongside one of the lines there so I can tell it's straight that way and then I'm going to go across the middle and just check that I am don't appear to be wonky and that looks to be just a little bit on that side that's it and across there okay the other way to do this is to get some copy paper cuts the same size fold it in half in two directions and then use that as a template to mark up your card it's up to you which way you do it as i say if you if you're if you like measuring you can measure your distances with a ruler okay so let me put that to one side out the way okay so now i've got my piece of card and now i need to take my hot four stamp and i need to figure out where i want to put it but also if i'm going to lay it out on this side which is quite useful because you it gives you an eye for where things are going but i'm going to need a center point marked on the on the other side just for when I position my hot foil stamp. Now, as I say, this is 15 centimetres square. It's actually slightly bigger than my card blank. Um, actually, it's probably 14.8 centimetres square. So it's the same size as my card blank. So I will be cutting it down a little bit to mat and layer it. So I'm not worried if I have a little mark near the edge of my card. So if I just take my pokey tool... And just kind of dig into my card. Has that gone through? No, I need to be on something that will give. Just... There we go. I just made a little notch at the side of my card. That eventually will get cut off. Let me see if you can see that. Uh, da, 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 there. Get the camera to focus. Gosh, is that, is that small? I can't even get the camera to focus on it. No, going to have to zoom in. There you go. You can just see a little notch I've made at the edge of the card. right so that will help me when i want to position this but also i need a mark on my gophers to line up with so, now i'm going to be careful because this is hot okay so ideally do this bit when it's cold and in fact i have already got a mark because i've already been doing some of these so i've made a pencil mark on the plastic edge 
and I've just done that by lining up my card making sure it's even either side and just putting a mark in where I'm going to line it up with each time okay so that's there put that back on the base so it stays warm and now I need to line up my hot foil stamp now I have here a stamp press type magnet a neodymium magnet it's about I think two centimeters in diameter and I think it's probably one and a half millimeters thick it doesn't matter the exact size as long as it's big enough for you to be able to um, you, you don't want a really tiny one okay but the exact size doesn't matter so I've wrapped this in some masking tape okay so that I can grab hold of it easily okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my hot foil stamp and I want the outermost part of my hot foil stamp pretty close to the edge of the card although I am going to trim it very slightly so just allow for that okay and don't worry about the fact that it doesn't go around in an exact circle you almost want the tail part coming further in so that when it overlaps that it's out out the way of the leaves of it okay so I'm going to do it like that I don't know if that's exactly how I did it on my card that I made okay let's have a look can we tell now i did the silver ones on this first and to be honest uh, i can't really tell oh it's around there so i've got one there but then it might not have been that way around when i did it it doesn't matter okay line it up somewhere okay and you might want to do some trials using some plain card before you try it on on some pattern paper that perhaps you you don't haven't have much of um, just to get the hang of how how it's going to work okay so i'm going to put that there and the magnet is stuck on the back okay so i can move this around and the hot foil stamp doesn't move onto the go press and foil Okay, I'm going to turn my card over. I've done this on the wrong side because I can't see my notch. So I've got my notch down at that corner. So let me just move this. If I want it kind of at the top. Okay, so I've just moved it. So I've got my notch at the bottom. So that when I turn my card over, I can still see my little notch. And I can line that up with my mark. Let me just pull this back so you can see that. So I've got my little notch at the bottom of the card lined up with a pencil mark on the plastic edge. Okay. I'm going to hold my hot foil stamp down through my card and then lift my card off. Okay. And then I leave my hot foil stamp on the platform to warm up and I'm going to plug it back into the base. So I've plugged it in and although the lid feels quite hot because I've had my go press and foil on for a while the hot foil stamp needs to warm up now while that's happening I can think about some foils okay so I'm going to do some foiling on this to start with and then I'm going to switch to doing it on a piece of pattern paper so I'm going to use this one I think I think hmm uh, oh, and I've got some foils here, and I was trying to figure out what colours to do. And I thought I might do rose gold and phantom purple. Maybe. Or maybe I'll just start with a lighter paper. I did, I did cut myself a selection. Hmm. Hmm, sport for choice. I think I am going to do rose gold and phantom purple on that one. Hmm. 
So it's approximately the same size as this. Yeah, there's a couple of millimetres in it. So I'm just going to mark up the back so I know where my edges are that I, I'm going to be lining up with. mark it up in exactly the same way and I'll say I've got lines on my ruler I can line up with the edge of the card to make sure I'm not crooked in fact there's a nice handy pattern on the back of this paper as well Now the other thing you might want to do to help you when you're doing this is to number these edges okay um, and that's just to help you remember where you are in your foiling process okay because we're, what we're going to do is be turning the card around rather than moving the hot foil stamp okay so now the other question is, which one should I do first? So I think I actually want to do the purple first and then put the rose gold over the top on this one. Okay, so I'm going to use my purple foil first. This is Make sure I've got the right one. Yes, this is phantom purple. So I'm going to cut a piece of foil. Now this bit I'm not going to trim. I'm just going to cut a little piece. And I need to do a test foiling to see how many shims I need. So I've got an off cut from my same paper pad. Okay, and I'm going to use that to just test to see how many card shims I need with this particular foil and card. Let me just turn the camera around. So I'm just putting a small piece of foil on there. I'm going to take a piece of my paper. It's what I trimmed off when I was cutting my pieces to size. Put that on there. I think I'm probably going to need three cartoons. So I will try that first. So I've got some 250 GSM card, same as I actually use for making my, my toppers normally if I'm using plain white card. That's folded in half to make an eight, a double A5 shim. And then I've got an extra piece and I'm just going to slot that in so it's three thicknesses thick. Pop that on the top. And then I'm just going to roll that through my die cutting machine. I've got one or two bits where it's not quite foiled, so let me try again with another shim. I've got another shim, I'm going to pop that inside as well, so that can be four layers all together. And I'm going to try again with my other piece of scrap.
there I've got crisp foiling all over okay so four shims it is okay so now I need a piece of foil the right size for the hot pot stamp I close the lid a moment and just line it up and see where I can trim because I don't want lots of extra spoil around the outside so I'm just going to kind of fold that over there cut that bit off and then I'll It's kind of cut my foil to a rough shape. And my foil can go on. I'm going to use my pattern paper. I would if I'd finished marking it. Yes, I did finish marking it up and just barely see the lines. I'm just going to put some numbers on. One, two, three. Let me show you with the piece of white card first. So I'm going to start off, okay? But let me bring the focus and foil back over to the craft mat. So I've put my foil on and I am going to line the number one line up with that centre mark. Okay, my lay that down. I'm going to get small piece of tape, it's a piece of low tack masking tape. I'm just going to put that on so that I can be sure that isn't going to move um, with the movement of air as I close the lid. I'm going to put my shims on, make sure they're on the area where the hot pour stamp is. Close the lid, it just needs to come back to temperature. There we are, and then I can roll it through. Lift the card off, carefully remove your masking tape. And peel your foil. There we are. Okay, so that's one done on that. I'm then going to repeat the same thing, but I'm going to do it on my pattern paper. But I need to cut some foil first, so. Let's bring the camera back round here. So I've now got the template for my foil, okay? Which makes it much easier for cutting foil. So what I normally do when I've got an awkward shape like this, I quite often find it's more economical to cut the length of it off the roll and get two, get two at a time, okay? So I can lay that on there. Cut straight across on the roll. I never, I never try cutting fancy shapes on the roll, and then I can pretty much cut round this. And now I've got a piece of foil the right shape, and then I should have enough here to cut the second one. 
there we go if i turn it around the other way i'll get a second one making sure that's snip any overhanging corners so i've got two pieces of foil ready to go okay and i will need more and there will be times when you're waiting for the go press and foil to heat up a bit okay but the important thing is i don't move the hot foil stamp so i've got my piece of pattern paper here so i'm actually going to do the next one on here and then turn it round so i need to make it so that i can actually see what i'm doing so i've got a number one there i can make that nice and bold that number one and the end of my line so i can see it And that'll be number that, that is number four okay so i don't need to do anything with my hot ball stamp it's nice and hot okay so i'm going to bring this over i'm sure the camera's focusing on it for you there we are and i'm going to find my number one which is there and i'm going to line that i'm going to put my foil on first and you've got the foil there we are. And it goes with the purple side down. Okay, so the pretty side down. Don't hang off the edge there. Okay, so pretty side down. Make sure it's covering the whole hot foil stamp. Line my centre mark, my number one, up with there. Put my tape on. And my shims and that's only been off for a second so I'm going to roll it straight through Okay, now the best way to work is with it on here, okay? But just to make sure you've had a good view of what's happened here. So, got that. There you go. You see, it's full so well. It's, it's picked it up and it's left the foil behind. Okay, so the next thing you do is you get your foil off of here. And I, because I've now had this off of my platform, I would, I would need to make sure it's nice and hot, okay? So normally I work with it all plugged into the base and then I don't have any problems. But then I need to take my next piece of foil, just put it on, and I find my number two, which is here. And in fact, let's do it on this piece so you can see. So I'm going to do it the number two position this time. So I'll actually be making two toppers here because I'm doing both. And my shims. And I'm, I'm actually going to put it back on the base to make sure it's hot before I roll it. Okay. And I'm, while I'm waiting, I'm going to cut some more foil. Don't waste much time. So let's take another two pieces of foil done. It obviously did need to reheat because that's 
taken a bit longer than I expected it to. Okay. So now I'm going to pull this off the base and roll it through. it off and there's the second part of my foiling okay I'm getting a couple of tiny bits of over foiling on my plain card but they'll be easy enough to tidy up at the end um, and I didn't test for shims on this card I did it for the pattern paper so I'm going to carry on and do the second part for the pattern pattern paper and work my way around those so I take my foil and I want my number two my number two which I can just see on the bottom there and line that up with my mark my piece of tape my shims Okay, it is nice and warm because it's been on the base. So, fill my foil, add the next bit of foil, and because I'm doing this with it plugged into the base unit, while I'm sorting out my foil and repositioning, it's heating up the, keeping the um, hot foil plate at the right temperature for me and, and maintaining its heat. So I'm lining up number three now with my pencil mark and taping in place. I'm doing this real time so you can see how quick it is. I'm going to need another piece of foil but you can see how that is building up I've got one more to do so I'm going to pause the camera cut some foil finish that off and complete the foiling on the white one and then I'm going to show you how you do the next reposition for the next color so bear with me okay welcome back so I've finished off the foiling on my pattern paper and on my plain white card okay and I've taken my hot foil stamp off the go for some foil and let it cool down while I tidied away all my scraps of foil and, and, and things so now I need to reposition it to do the next color so it's going to be going in between so I want it um, something like that okay so that it comes in between so I want the end of this one in between the ends of that one and the this end in between those two so probably about there yeah okay so again you might want to practice on some plain card and, and maybe not even worry about your foiling quality and just get an idea of where you'd want to position these and then you could use that as a template for positioning your hot foil stamp when you're foiling on your pattern paper. So I need my magnet. 
Okay. And I need to position this onto my goat frisk. So let me bring that over. Now, depending on the size and shape of your hot force tank, you might want this one to come kind of up the edge or you might want it to go across the top. Okay, I think I'm going to want it coming kind of up here again. It just depends how you think you're going to get sort of the best foiling quality and not have to fiddle about too much. So that's that's coming there. So that would be there. Let's see what that's like in that rotation. So that's coming there. I think that'll be okay because before it was coming more over there. Yeah, so I think that will work. So that needs to heat up now and I need to cut some foil. Now, when I was tidying up, I nearly threw all my piece of used foil away and then thought, no, I can use one as a, as a template for my next colour. So my rose gold that I'm going to use for this card. It's up to you what colours you use. I find I liked it using two contrasting colours. You might want to use two similar looking colours. Um, as I say, it's entirely up to you. Look at this, I might need to get another roll of foil out in a minute. my two pieces of foil. Now I'm just going to find another scrap of card, a piece there, and I am just going to do another test because I'm using different foil. And I'm just going to use one of these little scraps I've got here. Okay, and I'm going to try and put it on the place I think will be most difficult to foil, which, which I think is this bottom part that goes across. In fact, I could put a couple of bits of foil, maybe. So I'll have a gap in it, but that won't matter. I'm going to put that on there. And then I'm going to put my shims on. And it's come to temperature now, so I'm going to roll it through my die cutting machine. you don't move your hot foil stamp well that's foiled nicely it's on the wrong side of the card but it's foiled nicely so I think that will be fine carefully lift those off okay and now let's put a piece of foil on there we are and I'll start with my card so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got the camera to focus. My number one at the bottom here. Stay. 
and I'm lining that up the line that's numbered number one up with the mark at the bottom of the go press where I've marked the center tape it in place okay sure that's in focus put my shims on make sure they are over where the hot fall stamp is let's go a bit further to that edge so just have a feel make sure your shims are where you where they need to be and close the lid okay now it should all still be at temperature but the red lights come on so while i'm waiting i'll cut some more foil and i'm just going to pause the camera a moment so we're up to temperature now so i'm going to roll it through my die cutting machine there we are so then I just need to again take my next piece of foil put that on move my tape line up the number two that I've got at the bottom there the line next to it with my centre mark put my tape down put my shims on Wait for the light to go green, which it just has, and roll. There. So now I just need to keep changing the foil, rotating the card and rolling and these are quite quick to do then okay so I'm going to finish these off and then come back to you so I'm going to do the bottom onto that one as well okay see you soon welcome back so I have finished off with the foiling on the version on white card and also on my pattern paper now I knew I was getting low on uh, rose gold foil when I was finishing off this one and I had one piece of foil left um, and then I was going to need to start another roll and I got my new roll out and checked the colour and the shades are slightly different so I've done all the rose gold for that one from the new roll of foil and this one from the old so they are slightly different shades of rose gold um, and then I also looked out I did this one I talked about using the the thin fern hot foil stamp and I've done this and but I hadn't made it into a card and that's just done in some some turquoise foil and some silver glitterable foil um, I've got that one here yes oh that one is the, the what's it called silver foil iridescent, iridescent speckled pattern okay so do look in the video description if you're watching this video and find the link to the blog post that goes with this video and all the details of the foils and the hot foil stamps that i've used will be there okay as well as some reminders of how to mark up the card and that kind of thing okay so uh, and on this one you see I didn't number and I had to keep remembering and checking not that I wasn't foiling twice in the same place so that's why I thought the numbers were a good idea so these can now be made up into cards and you'll, you'll, you'll want a sentiment of, of some sort um, I had a look at what have I done with it of doing one of the cut foil sentiments and I did it on some purple foil card I'm not sure it, it's got quite a shows up quite well enough you might, might want something behind it um, or just you know have a sentiment on some white card in the middle when you might want it a circle I've done it as an oval 
okay um, or you can use your cut and fold sentiments with ink as I have on that one and you could either use it on its own and it might, might look a little bit lost or cut a tag or circle to go around that and use that okay so I'll make up the cards and now you'll be able to see those on my blog post okay and, then, and I'll you know put details of how I finish them off okay so that's those two and just a reminder this is where we started today with this one so I've used a cut foil and emboss frame in the silver with here on here and then white card with the blue for my sentiment okay so that's that and I wanted to have